So the cover was on last night. Now the cover is gone. It was extremely windy, and I have to go try and find the cover. But the problem is it's literally negative 15 with the wind chill right now. There it is. All right, that's a better scene. Hey everybody, welcome. Uh, I'm just back from the gym now. Um, I'm gonna show you a little bit of footage from this morning. Uh, my student Seth uh, came over and uh, we had a great lesson. Seth is a, definitely an advanced player. Uh, he played a lot as a kid and then took a lot of time off and when he came back to it, uh, he located me as a teacher. And we've been working together, and it's really interesting. He's quite a mature player, but one of the big things that we're working on together is the idea that, uh, you know, the, the groove needs to be a lot more established. We talk about that quite a bit. The groove, the, otherwise known as, you know, accuracy to, accuracy to a certain rhythmic framework is so important and it's so easy to buy in to the mythology and the dogma that phrasing and light and shade and all that stuff, you know, that should be our primary focus. And that's not the case. I really strongly believe that's not the case. Um, instead, those are ideas that we use to augment the, uh, to augment the basics, the basic musical fundamentals. And guess what? Rhythmic accuracy and groove, that is like the bottom line. That's the most important thing. The groove and the rhythm is more important than the melody, probably, by you know, at least a little bit. And that groove is so important. And that's one of the things that we're really working on is with Seth is filtering through some of those things. So you'll see that a little bit in our lesson today. And um, <clears throat> thanks to Seth for allowing a little bit of footage of himself and good job, you know, good job to you, Seth. And it was a really cool lesson. So uh, let's dive in and uh, have a peek at what was going on this morning. So don't make up the, don't make up the length of the high A because that'll make us fall behind, right? The grip replaces the number two, right? And da, ta -da, da, ba -dee -dee, right? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, ta -ga -da, da, ba -da. You know, that's what the grip should be. Yeah, once we settle into the groove, it's okay. Pretty little tune. But yeah, I love the last part. The same is going to be true. The same lesson is true in those tunes too. There's like arbitrary like holding of notes and stuff that doesn't fit. It's not that those notes aren't important. And it's not, at the end of the day, we might be doing some slight pulsing or holding, you know, to bring a little something extra out of the tune, but that's not the, when someone says hold a note, right? That's not the, um, that's not the foundation, right? That's like the added, yes. that gets added to the it's foundation. It's not placed, it's Exactly. Yes. It doesn't, yeah, like the holding and the cutting and the bagpipe, like folklore slash dogma, that we learn, uh, it, it, can, it augments, it should augment the true musical foundational stuff, not replace it or not be it. It's not it. Yeah. I think sometimes as bagpipers, like we want, we want it to be the thing because it's what makes us unique, but, uh, but, but dismissing the basic groove elements, you just make, you're just sort of making yourself a, uh, Sort of bizarre creature that you know what I mean? Yeah. Without the groove, nobody's gonna enjoy what you're doing, regardless of how much holding and like bagpipe stuff and stuff. Gordon Walker's doing. 
Gordon Walker is particularly interesting to me because he doesn't necessarily keep a perfectly steady groove, but he has such mastery of all the different concepts that you can sense that those rules are being purposefully tested. We just pause before a burrow. Yeah, exactly. Amazing. He does a strange pause in a lot of ending phrases. Like the tune slows down briefly and then comes back up again. Um, but it, it works. Yeah, and, and, it, and it's not even the consistency. It's just the fact that you know he's he's he has such a mastery of the fundamentals that he can do whatever he wants with his paintbrush, and it's gonna it, it has an impact. Right? You're in like this deep trance of a groove, preferably not with a sand hat on, but you're in like a deep trance, and then and then all of a sudden he just bends the ending phrase just a little bit and you're like, oh, man, that was nice. Um, and then meanwhile, like, there are other players that don't do that, you know, like, there are, play there are straight groove players. Um, and then, like, Angus McCall is a straight, to me, straight groove. And he just gets you in such an amazing, like, trance and all the melody, like, fits so nicely into that straight groove. But that's it, man. Like, to, you know, that's the name. I think we've talked about this before. Yeah. That's the name of the game is like, get the judge to put the pen down. You, know? you can't write if you're rocking back and forth in a deep trance on a chair. And that's what those guys do. That's, like, they, do they do it to me, and I'm sort of like, you know, I teach this stuff, you know, like trying to get people to play really written with great rhythmic accuracy and creating a great group. Um, and they, you know, they even get me to to put my analytics hat, take it off and just enjoy it. That's what you have to do. And so and so literally, literally, the judge will put their pen down and just listen. And then how, how much less likely are you to write negative stuff on a sheet if, you're, if your pen's not even in your hand? Because you're just kind of sitting back and like, whoa, like this is kind of it. And, it, and like I, that's, I was saying that earlier just today, like I would rather hear 10 missed doublings where the, where the foundational musical elements are there and people are thoughtfully trying to do something, you know, that's their own. I'd much rather hear that than a performance from start to finish with like no misses. Yeah. Um, Jack Lee and Alan Bevan were inspiring in that way to me. They just played great movements. And they were obsessed with great movements and resultantly they never missed. Ever. Like they never. Like I've played solos against Alan Bevan for three or four years when I was in BC. And I was in good form. I was, you know, playing in good form, but I never beat him once. Just because he was, you know, so focused on what I would consider to be really good things. Steady tempo, great groove, uh, great movements. Like, not just, play, not just not screwing up the movements, but producing great movements. 